Welcome back to See What She Can Do Conversations. I'm your host, Tina Finelli, and I'm here with Lisa Dunbar, our co-host. Hello, people. This morning. Our guests today share some really great insights on how a people-centered mindset and your athletic skills can help you in your career. We're super excited to have both Hilda Gann and Nikki Matarazzo here with us today. Hilda Gann is the founder of People Bright Consulting. It's a human resources firm, and she really helps others see the value of people in their organizations. And she does this through employee and leadership training. So welcome, Hilda. Thanks, Tina. <laughs> It's good to have you here. We also have Nikki Matarazzo. She's a motivated and really passionate technology and social impact professional. Nikki leads her business with a growth mindset um, and a people first mindset, which is really awesome. We're happy to have Nikki here. Nikki brings to the table all kinds of really amazing pro sport experience. Uh, she played soccer in Europe uh, professionally and she competes at the elite level with CrossFit. So welcome, Nikki. We're happy to have you here. Thanks so, so much for having me. I'm happy to be here this morning. I was so excited today because this is like in my network of professional professionals and in our world with See What She Can Do, we are always talking about the strength of, and the power of sport and how it's influenced our professional lives. So this, like, I was so excited for today. It's, <laughs> it's so awesome. fun to bring sport and career together right and we sometimes forget the impact that sport has had for us um, throughout our lives now even as we're you know more senior leveled um, you know career professionals but at the start of our career that was something we really relied heavily on right for sure and to have the opportunity to talk about it is amazing so I'm actually going to kick right in yeah okay. go ahead let's do it um, and uh it's amazing to have you guys. Um, Hilda, you've won the you're, you've been awarded the top ten best places workplaces in Canada not once but twice. And yes. you uh, you talk and and you build powerful and positive corporate cultures, which is amazing. Um, so I'm super excited to hear how the two collide for you. Like how has sport influenced your professional life? So I'm not a pro, but I think I I really was actively involved in in school, taking part in just about anything and everything, you know, even played basketball. So I suddenly reflected back as I'm preparing for for the for the interview today, thinking, yeah, I did a lot of organized sports and I loved this sense of team and team camaraderie. I, I hearken back to the basketball where the coach was a novice coach and he didn't really know how to make the most of it and make teams. And I so wanted that team concept to happen. So I think fast forward to my career, I've always been about people. I've always been about connecting people to each other and creating strong teams. So I guess that really reflects on me as a person, me as a, a desire to be involved in a team, to be organized, to be at your top peak performance. Now, Hilda, you uh, mentioned earlier in our conversations, I know Hilda through uh, a female accelerator program we did called Ella, yeah. um, which was amazing. Yeah. So you mentioned to me, Hilda, about the fact that you played all kinds of sports. You kind of honed in on dance, you know, in your mature years. But talk to us a little bit about the sports that you did play as a kid. So I did, as I said, I did play basketball. I was a cheerleader. Um, actually, I was one of the co-captains of our cheerleading squad. So it, it wasn't quite as twisty, turny and bendy as it was uh, in those days. But uh, I was certainly part of that. And I just love the aspect of that. I did start very early doing dance. And that's a passion of mine now. And I actually ended up in Highland dancing. So if you can imagine a, a little Asian girl with ringlets in her hair Aww. and a kilt. I did that. And that sense of competition was there. But that sense of perfection, every move you make, your hands, your feet, all of the, your body posture, all need to coordinate together to create that that kind of that synergy of yourself. And so that motivates me. And I found the other day uh, ballet I do twice a week. And during COVID, I had to stop. And then suddenly, uh, 
uh, the group that I do it with sort of said, that's it. We have to go virtual. We can't wait anymore for this. And that first lesson back reminded me of what sport does for me. Because of all the sports I've ever done, and I did a variety of different dance, the, the ballet is the one that really resonates with me. And I can do two hours of, of, of dance and, and not skip a beat and, and want to do more. That's the energy that it drives. So post the first virtual class back, I suddenly realized that was so powerful for me for energy. And, and what it did was it energized me post session, but it also created the creativity that came so rapidly yeah. for me. And it lasted for 24 hours. And I thought, that is why I always went to dance, no matter how tired I was, if I had a project after work, I would still go to dance. That's the power yeah. that sport does for me. I was just going to say that that's, that's I was, the word transcend comes to mind for me. And you said something interesting in, right at the very beginning, like that you, you know, you didn't play at a elite level or a high level. And we talk amongst uh, the See What She Can Do t- team all the time. Like often women are hesitant to define themselves as athletes. We do use the term athlete, but an athlete yeah. is, I mean, for us, it's just physically active. And, mm-hmm. and you've just yeah. like literally hit the nail on the head in terms of how just that participation takes your, your mind and body to a different place and it, and it powers you, yeah. whether you're conscious of, yeah, of it or not, exactly. you are, as you've just said, but like whether you're conscious of it or not, it transcends into what you can achieve in your professional life, especially if you have the aptitude to recognize it, acknowledge it, show gratitude for it and like really embrace it, right? Well, and I love, Hilda, that you played so many different sports, of which, like, your tiny stature, right? So you're playing basketball, you're, you're, you know, you're Irish dancing, you're cheerleading, like, I mean, that does wire your brain differently, too, right? Because you have to be willing to try something that you're not good at, as, at a starting point, and that you do get good at. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love this notion of flow, too, right? I feel the same way when my brain is really, like, tapped out, I go for a hike or, you know, my best working time is in the morning because I go do my, you know, I do CrossFit in the morning and then I'm, my brain is going, like it's, yeah. it's ready to go, right? I'm curious to hear, Nikki, like your, what a- how you feel. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off there. <laughs> is go that ahead. Hilda jumping is that you, in? Hilda? Go ahead. Okay, just to finish quickly then, what I found when we, when I got back to this virtual ballet was the muscle memory came back and everything mm-hmm. just, yeah. I could feel as I did each plie or or pose, all the muscle memory was coming back and flowing back into my body. And I just, as you say, transcend. I found this, wow, look at this. This is great. I got to yeah. get back to this so quickly. Well, it takes discipline, right? I'm the opposite of you. I'm almost six feet tall. So ballet is not <laughs> in my wheelhouse at all. But <laughs> like it's such discipline, right, for your body as a as a uh, art. It's very cool. Very awesome. Cool. Um, Nikki, tell us about your your background and and how sport has impacted your your life. I'm curious. To yeah, absolutely. From you. Well, I would say that I've been doing some sort of sport, gosh, since I could walk. And my parents were were advocates of putting me into multiple different sports. So before I started playing soccer and really fell in love with soccer as my my lifelong sport, I tried baseball, basketball running. I was a cross country runner all throughout elementary school. I did gymnastics for a few years and looking back, I kind of wish I had continued with it because I see now being a, a CrossFit athlete, the benefits of gymnastics. But when I found you're soccer, pretty, you're pretty I damn was, good at the, uh, you're pretty d- damn good at the gymnastics components. I've seen her personally. She's coached me and I've oh, watched gosh. her. Yeah. Your gymnastics. I'm sure that gymnastics has played a part in uh, some of your successes. Oh my god! Oh gosh, my 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 gymnastics when I was three years old. Oh, you yeah, were three. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Extended muscle memory. Extended muscle memory, exactly. <laughs> it, it really just goes to show that you can learn anything at any age. I, because I would say that yes, I having been an athlete for my entire life. When it came time to learning some entry level gymnastics moves as an adult, I was able to rely on knowing how to move my body and learn. And I really think that goes to show the importance of sport and understanding your body, but also understanding how you can learn something new regardless of when you start. But I would say that if I were to call myself an athlete and and what sport I would align to it, of course, it would be soccer. So I started playing soccer when I was 
probably five or six. Mm -hmm. And I started out in, uh, in a kids league, probably what we you would call, um, what would it be called today? I think house league. Yeah. And I started off with a boys team quickly wanted to become a little bit more competitive in soccer. So moved into rep and then played rep up until the end of high school. I was very fortunate to find a coach a little later on in my, my soccer playing days who really started to believe in me. And so when I, told him that I had ambitions to play professionally or, or play on the national team. He, he said, okay, just keep working hard. He really started to believe in me. And, and that was something that was new because up until the age of 13 or 14, I got cut all the time. Like I got cut from the same team four times and I just kept going back year after year, hoping, hoping that I would eventually make the team. So that's great back, determination, on, Nikki, honestly, it. that's, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Well, and that goes to show in, in sport, when you're faced with those challenges, you learn perseverance, you learn how to overcome obstacles. And that those are the two things that I would really relate back to your professional life and really anything in life is that you need perseverance. You need to be able to confront a challenge and believe that you'll be able to overcome it by putting in the work, believing that, that you can do anything. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I took away from, from soccer. And fortunately, when that coach came along, who really did believe in me. We, we stayed connected in my first year of university. And then he presented me with the opportunity to go to Italy to try out. And, and I tried out for it for a team there and, and, and ended up staying there five years to play professionally. So it was an incredible, incredible journey. Amazing. Right. Cause even in that, like in your professional life, it's, you're not getting yeses all the time, yeah. but when you believe in your, like to your core that your strategies are aligned and you can, you can achieve, you keep working at it. Right. And yeah. that's, it's amazing. So what would you say to that 13 year old? Cause you were 13 when you were getting cut and what's happening now oh. is a lot of kids at 13, when they get cut, they're done. They drop out. You know, they drop out three times. Like girls are dropping out at three times the rate of their male counterparts. Mm -hmm. Right. So what would you say to that parent or that, yeah, that girl at 13 that maybe did get cut or, you know, isn't, feeling like she's good enough to just stay on a recreational league or, or any kind of competitive league, what would you say to her right now? Well, this has, this comes up with some of the athletes that I work with today. And I, the first question that I ask them is why do you, why do you play? And, and I really encourage them to find the answer. And if their why is something that brings something positive into their lives, that's the reason they should stick with it, regardless of the feedback positive and negative that they're receiving from a coach or a parent or a player. And then the second piece is we, as people, we all have strengths and we all have, we all have areas of development. And oftentimes if we're cut from a team or we don't get a job, it's because the person who's hiring or making the decisions, they're focusing on our areas of development, but it's important for us as individuals to recognize that even though we have those areas to develop, we do have our strengths. So an exercise that I always encourage is to write down three to five strengths that you have as an athlete and keep that with you and, and reference it or look back on it when you're doubting yourself or you're, you're losing belief in yourself. Because when you receive negative feedback or constructive criticism, that doesn't mean all of your strengths go away. They're still very much a part of you. And sometimes to keep you moving forward, you have to you have to turn back and, and look on those strengths to, to see what makes you the athlete or the professional or the friend or the sister or, or, or whatever role that you are. If, it's if I can add something, yeah. sure, if I can add something as well. I was thinking back to when my kids were taking Taekwondo and they, at one point they had to break a board that day, their, their first board. And the, the sensei said, today was an achievement for you. You've broke these boards. And what you learned from this lesson is that you didn't just reach the board, you broke through. And in life, you are going to have obstacles. And what you need to do is imagine breaking through that obstacle. So this is a powerful lesson. And, you know, they went on to break two and three and five boards by the time they got their black belts. But I never forget what he said. And what a powerful thing for these kids to hear and their parents to hear mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so visual too, yeah. right? Like the yeah, physicality yeah, of breaking exactly. that board. That's amazing. Gallup yeah. also has a book, which you guys, you've all reminded me of, but they've recently published their 20th edition and it tracks, um, and Hilda, you might see this in your in HR capacity where um, performance appraisals in a corporate culture are all built often, I'm not going to say all, often built around 
hey, uh, team member of mine, here, here, we're doing your performance review and here are the two things that you're not so great at. So we're going to send you to training to do that. Um, versus Gallup would propose, like, let's lead through our strengths. So here are yeah. the things you're awesome at. Like, let's make those, let's kick those up a whole other notch, like, yeah. like kicking through the board, so that the things that you're less, like, so we lead through your strengths and we leverage yeah. your strengths for great things so that the things that you're not so great at don't even matter. Yeah. Which is super cool. And that's cool. what I teach. That's what I teach too when I'm I'm helping people and companies with their performance ma- management. Mm-hmm. And people often reflect back on what you you did and then let's let's build your if you're an introvert, let's build your ability to socialize and network. Well, no. Let's build your ability to make amazing, you know, detailed projects because that's your forte. So I teach people how to plan for the future. You're you're your your review should be about planning for the future and tapping into what your uniqueness is is what i call unique potential and tap into that and and foster that and grow that and what a win-win for a company when you get to really promote your strengths and feel so good about them and then the the company wins because you're doing that great work to move the bar of the company for sure you know what that's a that's a great segue into kind of our next Uh, piece that we want to talk about is what kinds of skills are organizations looking for and and how can people leverage their experience it could be as an athlete it could be as a team manager it could be as a fundraiser it could be as an official it could be you know some aspect some skill that they've built by just participating in sport and how can they leverage that as part of their career so I guess the two pieces are you know what are employers looking for and 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 how can you help guide people to leverage those skills when they're either applying for a job or looking for that next promotion or, you know, aspiring to do something new in their careers. Hilda, do you want to take that one? Sure. That's, that's, a, that's a great question. And I think my husband and I had our own engineering company and we hired a lot of young engineers as well as, as, as other staff. And really we, you can always teach skills. You can always teach people how to do something that they've not done before or to do it better. But what you can't teach is behavior and an attitude. And so you, we really looked for that. And oftentimes what we found is we would go and look at the bottom where they say their skills, their hobbies. And I remember specifically one person who was going to be a project manager and he had played organized sports and volleyball and he was coaching now. And I thought this guy is going to be great because he understands the team concept. He's organized, you know, he's got mental agility, he's got perseverance. So anybody who has played organized sports in any way or has a passion for, you know, whether it's cross country skiing or skiing or basketball or whatever, those things really help. Uh, to for us because it's it's about character it's about development and I think uh, when you're writing your resume do highlight that and even when you're being interviewed share how sport has really helped you in terms of your motivation your attitude your ability to work um, through things as an individual and the stress management that that comes with so really really think about those those skill sets that you have and apply them to really shining at your interview and shining in your in your workplace. That's amazing. And I'm thinking, of course, I have, I'm sure we all know, uh, I have a, three nephews who have recently graduated from university in the last two years, and they're struggling right now. Um, one of them was furloughed, so they're trying to figure out what's next, and they've all played organized sport. And so I'm actually, I find myself coaching them a lot where, listen, they're all like, well, they're looking for people with with experience. I'm like, well, you like fantastic. You may not have structured corporate experience, but here's here's how you can relay your yeah. experience exactly what yeah. you're saying, like, and navigating through how to position themselves and how sport has taught them to manage adversity and to to work as a team leader. Um, especially the two of them have been captains in the sports that they play. Um, but then on the flip side, I actually know people who are uh, later in their careers and are considering um, a complete switch of careers paths and looking at second careers and sometimes are doubt like I think not doubtful um, unsure of course and I'm like listen 
it's it's how you tell your story and believe in your capacity to have impact yeah. that will that will exactly. and the same as sport right like you go to a new sport you may not know it but like if you've that's something that we all kind of we, Tina and I are yeah. always nodding our heads because we played multi sport like and we played a lot of different yeah. sports yeah. and a few for me a few at a high level but even just playing for fun teaches you strategies to mm-hmm. make you better at new sports. Like he, I had a girlfriend who I would, she was so athletic and I was like, you could, she could be introduced to like Olympic handball on Mars and she'd be the state champion within a month. <laughs> like it's just, it transcends, it's, right? Exactly. It's about transference of skill and knowledge, really. Mm-hmm. Um, two things you said, captain. So get those nephews of yours to think about what was it that made me a good captain? Right. And that's the, that's that's how he, they sell their leadership ability, their ability to motivate uh, others at that very early age. And the fact that they were identified to be captains and became captains, there's some leadership qualities that they have instinctually. So get them to, 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 to put that in words, yeah. right? Because Hilda, that's, that's so, a great so uh, that's a great you piece know, of advice, Hilda. You know what? I'm going to stop us for a second for our commercial break. We shall be back in about uh, 30 seconds, and we'll continue on this great conversation. Hi, welcome to the Buzz 505 Studio. We have a new idea for you to try. We're really encouraging you to listen to our podcast along with a glass of wine. We are featuring this month the Laurent McKell Merlot and the Laurent McKell and Oak Chardonnay. Both wines can be found at the LCBO for $12.95 a bottle. These wines are really versatile with all kinds of foods, or you can just sip and enjoy them while you're listening to a podcast. The un Chardonnay is a personal favorite of mine. I like it because it's all about the fruit. When you have an un style of Chardonnay, that means that the wine has never actually touched any oak barrel. So we've got just fruit here with apple, citrus. It's a really nice, crisp and refreshing style of white wine. And then for our red lovers, we have the Laurent McHale Merlot, also at $12.95 a bottle at the LC. CBO. And this wine is full of blueberry, plum, a little bit of spice as well. It's an elegant and smooth style of red wine. Certainly bring it out for dinner, but it sips nicely on its own as well. So the next time you're listening to a podcast from Buzz 505, we encourage you to pour yourself a glass. Cheers. Okay, we're back with Hilda Gann and Nikki Matarazzo, and we're talking about how your athletic skills and your participation in sport can help you in your career. Nikki, we wanted to jump in because we're having a conversation around how your skills necessarily um, aren't aren't a direct correlate, may not necessarily be a direct correlation to your your job or your career, but some of those. Um, characteristics that you learn as you participate in sport can be things that your employers may be looking for. I know you told me a great story about a former Dell president and what he said about athletes. Do you want to share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. So I had the incredible opportunity to work under the former president of Dell Canada, and we had a very candid conversation one day in the hallway. He was always open to chatting with whomever was open to it, and I am very social, very fearless, I would say. So we just started having a conversation and I, he asked me actually what my future goals were with, within, within Dell. And at the time I hadn't been working for the organization for very long. So I didn't really consider myself very technical. When we think of Dell technologies, you think of understanding computers and servers and data centers and how everything works together. And he said, well, Nikki, I understand you're, you're an athlete. Is that fair to say? And I said, absolutely. He goes, well, you know, a few years ago I had the decision to make, and this was when I believe he was working abroad. I had a decision to make to decide whether or not I was going to hire candidate A or candidate B. And he said, candidate A had all of the, the, the corporate characteristics that we were looking for. Candidate B didn't, didn't have the technical expertise, particularly that was required for the role, but she was a former athlete, an elite level athlete. And he said that they ended up choosing to move forward with her for the position because he knew that her as an athlete would have taught her the skills needed to to learn everything that she needed to do well in the new role. So when you're an athlete, you have to overcome obstacles. You have to constantly be agile, adapting to your environment, persevering through struggles, working in a team environment, collaborating, pivoting. And those are the skill sets that 
he identified as needed to succeed in the role that she went for. So they ended up choosing someone who perhaps didn't have the, the technical background, but rather the athletic background to, to move forward in, in the candidacy. And so when I think of my career progressions, and I've had the opportunity to move for move through four or five positions within Dell, oftentimes I dive into something new with very little experience. And I always tell a sports story, whether it's moving to Italy and learning a new language from, from zero or being cut from the same team three times, but keep moving forward. Those are the, those are the stories that really resonate because it shows hard work. It shows determination. And, and those are the things that will really make you successful in the work environment or really in anything. Now, Nikki, you talk when, a little bit about, oh, Hilda, you want to jump in? Yeah. When I th- think about what you just said, Nikki, I, I really think that is so true. You know, when, when we're young and we're learning all these, we learn about perseverance and we learn about continuing to improve ourselves. And I, and I remember a call, a, a colleague of mine saying to, to me that she thought I was fearless. And I said, what do you mean? She said, I watched you grow your businesses and you just never, you never are scared. You just keep doing new and new things. Because when we started our iTrans business, I didn't know how to, you know, grow in the U.S. I didn't know about expanding across Canada. I learned those things. And we didn't have Google in the, those earlier mm-hmm. days. So I think as athletes, we think about how we can achieve more and by little steps we just continue to gain the confidence and move forward and hopefully it never goes away no matter how old you are right (laughs) right Right. Right. (laughs) i feel like all of it can be summarized under the term growth mindset and that's something fortunately that students are being taught today in school but it's believing in the realm of possibility, believing that your behaviors will influence the next thing to come versus having a fixed mindset, which is focusing on all of these external factors, which are deterministic and deterministic in their, um, in their influence. So I feel like as an athlete, you develop this growth mindset, which then can carry you to success in in the workplace. And wouldn't that help, us all with this massive epidemic right Mm. around you know confidence this lack of confidence that many people are facing right now this fear of being judged you know with all the social media out there this whole like if everybody were taught a growth mindset where you know you're embracing that kind of failure as the next stepping stone to success then it's less about how you fell down and more about how you're getting up yeah Mm -hmm. Right. And I think being in organized sports or sports minded in general, you learn that and and you've learned those obstacles because sometimes people don't have enough obstacles in their way that when they finally, you know, reach adulthood and the working world, if they haven't had that ability to manage those obstacles, it's, it's really hard. I was at a, a session yesterday, a virtual event, and and this person was talking about leadership and our roles as leaders is Think of it as two ladders. One is skills. Your role as a leader is to help build those skills. But your second role is think of the second ladder as being confidence. And your role is to help bolster confidence. Because so often as leaders, they can put you down by saying, you didn't do this. You need to do that better. You need to work harder. Rather than take that person and uplift them by bolstering their confidence um, along the way. So the ladders should be going up the rungs, skill improve confidence, more skills, more confidence, so that they in turn will become motivators and leaders themselves. So I thought that was a powerful analogy and I I love the the concept. And doesn't that tie in beautifully with your Rev Up program? Do you want to talk a little bit about that, uh, Hilda? So as you introduced, Tina, my husband and I created this this workplace that became top 10 best workplaces in Canada. And that success... Yes, twice. And that success, thank you, thank you. And that success really was a dream of ours, which became a reality and validated externally. So when I started this new, newer company, People Bright, I wanted to help other companies build their best version of themselves. And you came up with this concept that was easier to articulate than this is why we were successful. Five, five words, principles based on rev up, rev up your your business. So it stands for treat people with respect and equality, value them for who they are, 
So that's the rev. And then the last two is look at the uniqueness of each of us and tap into that potential. Imagine what you would have as a company when you did that for yourself, your managers, and your staff. If everybody treated each other with the respect, equality, value to who they were, looked at that uniqueness and potential, imagine what kind of team that you would have. And imagine what kind of world we would have if we actually lived by <laughs> by those those aspects well, of our personal lives, right? Yeah. First you start with businesses and then yeah. I'll take on the world. You can rev up your children, you can rev up anything. <laughs> I feel really. like you need like that lawnmower, you know, that pull string where you'd be like, rev it up. <laughs> I love it. Like in a team environment, it, it's it's showing a great value for your team members and not everybody's the same. Everybody, there's uniqueness and everybody has a contributing part and you can motivate each other. It's not a one man show. Like it's a team. Yeah. It's amazing. I love exactly. that. Exactly. It's yeah. amazing. And, and there's a, don't go ahead. Thank Nikki. you. So just, there is a, there's a big focus right now. And I think it should be a big focus on driving diversity, inclusion and equality exactly. initiatives across all organizations. And I think now more than ever, that's incredibly important. And the main message there is, is valuing uniqueness or the fact that there is power in diversity, there is power in inclusion. So focusing yeah. not necessarily on, on similarities, but, but differences to, to create a powerful collaborative team. Now you're and a part of a group, people, uh, Nikki, aren't you uh, at Dell that actually helps um, focus on diversity and inclusion for women? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I joined an employee resource group a few years ago called Women in Action. And it's an employee resource group that has been at Dell for a number of years. And just this year, I had the opportunity to take on that leadership role in Canada. And so Women in Action is focused on developing an inclusive community for women, both internally and externally, and helping all of all of our women develop their full potential. And so I work with an incredible team of about 32 committee members and we support internally up to 200 team members in Canada. Mm -hmm. And we put on workshops and we ran, we have run like technology rallies where we bring in keynote speakers to talk about the, the power of diversity and inclusion, how to develop confidence. And just tying back to earlier, earlier on the podcast today, we were talking about Gallup studies and strength finders. Literally last week, we put on a strength finders workshop where we had 30 women focus on and focus on identifying their strengths and how those strengths can really be assets to help them progress in the workplace. So I'm inv incredibly passionate about about the employee resource group and we are working on plans to see what we can do in in the, in the new year all virtually until otherwise no, noted <laughs> do you find it that people have a hard time um, identifying their strengths like is that a hard when you go through a strength finder do people it's so much easier for us to pick ourselves apart right do you find that people have a hard time finding those strengths? Oh my goodness, absolutely. Fortunately, the great thing about Strength Finders and the, the Gallup book is it it does it for you. You take yeah. a test and it tells yeah. you what your strengths are. But uh, I also have a platform, a mindset development platform called Think Out Loud Co. And through this platform, I have the opportunity to work with athletes and teams. And the first session that I do with all of my teams and all of my athletes is that strength identifier exercise. And I say, okay, everyone, you have your strength card in front of you. You have five spots. Mm -hmm. Write down your five strengths as an athlete. And I want you to use this card over the next month before you practice or before you play your game. And without a doubt, people, the girls, I primarily work with girls, come up with maybe one strength, three strengths. It's very challenging. But interestingly, when you then ask their teammates to help them complete their own card, you have 10 and 12 strengths. So it's it's wow. interesting. We as individuals focus so much on our areas of development. Notice how <laughs> I don't use the word weakness. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I focus on areas of development because that's like a growth mindset approach to it. But when we ask others to reflect on ourselves right away, they come up with all the great things. Yeah. So it's, it's I, social in nature. Add, sorry. If I can add too, um, there's, a, there's an assessment called fascination advantage. And when I was developing the rev up concept, I thought, how do I help people understand what uniqueness is, what their uniqueness is? And I've done Gallup, I've done DISC, I've done Myers-Briggs and, and Strength Finders, and all of this helps to validate who you are. What I found with Fascination Advantage was it was another form, It's but 
it's different in that it's how the world sees you. Oftentimes, when we look at a Myers-Briggs, we, it's how we see the world. And what I love about Fascination and Advantage is that they talk about different is better. And the report is written in a very positive way that bolsters your confidence. And I think regardless of what it is, Myers-Briggs, Gallup, uh, Strength Finders, it validates who you are. And, and as Nikki said, too often we look at our growth points or we can't see our our, our positives. So any assessment form is really helping you validate who you are. For many, it's not a surprise, but they're not sure. So having that external recognition really validates and builds and bolsters that confidence because that's what we need to do is we need to bolster our confidence and come into our own as who we truly, truly are. And the more authentic you are and the more you can present yourself, it, it perpetuates confidence and it just it's just a growing growing thing that will happen and well, great achievements right? yeah, yeah yeah well thank you so much for sharing those practical tools we'll put links in the episode notes to your program so that people who are interested can check them out for themselves because mm-hmm. I think it's really important to know where those practical resources are we have two minutes left of the show and we want to wrap up by asking you guys um, the same question and that question is you know with covid um, in the middle of COVID, many of us are, are trying to figure out how to relieve stress, uh, what our self next, you know, self-care mechanism may be. What are you guys doing during COVID for self-care uh, and wellness? You got one minute each. <laughs> Hilda, you want to start? Oh, oh, okay, fine. Um, I'm trying to stay positive. I did that early on, kind of got lost in it need to refocus every week I need to think about what self-care I need to do I go for hikes on the hikes walks on the weekend about two hours long and now I've started my amazing amazing virtual ballet which will be the piece de resistance Mm -hmm. amazing well I want to see a few of those videos on uh, LinkedIn Hilda (laughs) (laughs) oh we'll jump over to Nikki Nikki what are you doing during uh, COVID to keep yourself sane and help yourself uh, on the wellness front Thanks, Tina. Yeah, I think that's a great question. So I start off every day with some sort of movement. Sometimes my motivation is lacking, but I then fall back on that discipline because I know once you move, you're going to feel better. In terms of other wellness activities, I make sure to journal every day, whether that's writing down five things that I'm grateful for or just reflecting at the beginning or the end of the day. And then I get away from my screen. I've actually deleted social media for the month, the last month, just to get a little bit of a pause, a digital declutter, as Cal Newport would say, and and really just taking more time to be outside. So get away from my screen, go for a walk, get away from my screen and just sit because I think taking breaks, being in solitude and reflecting, it works wonders for both your mind and your body. Don't forget those uh, big bear licks. Nikki just got a new puppy, so she gets all kinds of Oh, yes. (laughs) Okay, that that explains. I'm like, what? (laughs) That's amazing. This has been so much fun. Thank you, you guys. It's it's been amazing. And it really has been. It's so fun to see the, the correlation between, you know, sport and work and just like self-care and, and uh, taking care of each other and ourselves, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. So it's awesome. So thank you, ladies, for joining us. We're really thrilled to uh, have made this connection, and uh, we look forward to the next time. Have a great day. Thanks. Really Thanks enjoyed so it.